Hey guys, it's Mr. Jack and Triple Zero here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Ute DT30 Redneck Crew Cab. This truck is modified from the original DT30 Crew Cab by a bunch of southern folks who want to show off on and off the road with this truck. The styling is pretty much standard issue for 80s trucks as it was built in 1986, except for the dirt all over the sides and the front of the truck. It has a lap time of 1 minute, 41 seconds, 75 milliseconds at the quote-unquote top gear test track and 2 minutes, 48 seconds, 66 milliseconds at the automation track, a top speed of an astonishing 159 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 7.86 seconds. This vehicle uses a powerful gasoline version of the 5.9 liter Cummins 6BT inline 6 turbo engine that produces 461.5 horsepower and 1,052.1 foot-pounds of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of an American standard 4.4 miles per gallon and weighs 5,200.4 pounds or 2,358.9 kilograms. And for the market, since those people customize the living crap out of this truck, it doesn't compete with anyone in the market. In terms of how I made the DT30 Redneck Crew Cab, the panel material will be made out of regular steel with a ladder chassis made out of galvanized steel, with a front longitudinal engine placement and both the front and rear suspensions are solid axle coil. For the engine, it's an inline 6 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to 102mm and the stroke set all the way up to 120mm which makes it a 5,883 cubic centimeter engine with pushrod headers made out of cast iron. For the crank, it's made out of billet steel with the cow rod set to heavy duty forge and the pistons at regular forge. For the compression, it is set at somewhat of a high 11.1 .1 to 1 with the cam profile set pretty much all the way down to an 18. For the turbocharger, like always, we're using ball bearing turbos with the intercore set to 774 horsepower and the compressor and turbine are set to 54 millimeters and the AR ratio is set at 0.974 with the boost set to 30.5 PSI. For the fuel system, we're using a direct injection single configuration with a standard intake running on ultimate fuel with the fuel mixer set all the way up to a 10.0, ignition timing at 66 and the RPM limit set to 3400 RPM. For the headers, it's pretty much like standard issue. For every turbocharged vehicle, we got short cast headers with a single exhaust. The exhaust dimmer set to 165 millimeters or 6.5 inches with bypass valves with no CATA converters and straight through mufflers. And for the second time in forever, we're going to hear how she sounds like. So right now, give you a manual test of the engine right now. Not a bad sounding engine, even though it revs pretty low, which is pretty much standard issued for all diesel vehicles, but it's pretty daunting. For the drive type, we're going to be using a 4x4 setup with a manual 4 speed with the top speed set at 159.3 miles per hour, which sucks that we're capped in the top speed because of the RPM limit, even though the top speed could actually go to 163.4 miles per hour, with pretty high spacing with a manual locker so we can go off-road with this thing, which I'm about to do once again to BMG Drive. For the tires, they're pretty much as big as they can be with chunky off-road tires, with the front and rear tire whip set to 305 millimeters running on 15 inch steel rims for the brakes they're both at 300 millimeters the front brakes are solid disc three pistons and the rears are solid disc two pistons for the aerodynamics or anything it's pretty much as expected but the cooling airflow i jump it up to a 70 because i test this in beam and g and this thing really likes to overheat for the interior it's pretty much standard issue a five-seater truck with standard interior and a standard cassette because cds who gives a damn about them especially that time of age it's got typical hydraulic power steering, no ABS whatsoever because that was a luxury back then with standard 1980s safety standards. And suspension, very, very basic. Standard springs, twin tube dampers, no other choice but passive sway bars running on an off-road preset. Despite a fair amount of problems on here such as the wheel spin issues, brake force being too low, wheel spin, tires are wide, all that good stuff. We're going to export this to BMG Drive and test it out. So here we are at the industrial map, and taking a look at this vehicle, it pretty sucks. 
the freaking dirt is gone because, unfortunately, the rust mod where I got it from in automation doesn't support here on a beam and G. So let's pretend that there's dirt all over this truck like you've seen in automation. And the word ute is your knockoff big Ford letterings like your old school Ford trucks. And even what makes it a wannabe Gavril D series is this DT30 crew cab right above and underneath this turn indicator. Like on the actual D series, I think it says D15 and below like some certain trim model or whatever, but I think it's what it is in the Gavril D series. It's the D series like D15, 25, 35, or whatever. I, I don't think there's nothing below the turn signal. And take a look at the front here. You got your big ass push bar here or headlight guard or something like that and these freaking steer antlers <laughs> this is pretty stupid and what's even more stupid these exhaust pipes <laughs> it's pretty much a replacement of the smokestack exhaust let's pretend these are smokestacks but <laughs> it's ridiculous you know those country people they get what they do but not exactly when it comes to customizing their vehicles to the fullest extent so i'm just right outside the map boundaries here separated by this little it had just stalled out on me. <laughs> it for real stalled out on me. <laughs> so I was about to say, yeah, right outside the map out here, these boundaries, as you can tell by this gate here, and we're going to be doing some basic performance tests with this vehicle. The first we're going to be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, second, a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run, which is possible in this straightaway right here. I guarantee it. So right now, hopefully this doesn't stall out. We'll hit the gas to do our acceleration test right now. And thank God it didn't. Go through first gear and 0 to 62 in 6.19 seconds. That was close to 297.37 feet. Get ready for a brake test. Now, that may have been a 61, but who knows? No, I was right, 62. 62 to 0 in 4.1 seconds of 184.82 feet. It's pretty funny how the brakes didn't even skid or nothing. The tires skidded with these big of the brakes here. So for top speed run, that about sawed out right there. So we're above 100 miles an hour. Um, I swear these are collidable. I think that was collidable. And these trees up ahead. Okay, this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> oh my god, these trees are hella daunting. Thinking like they're about to tear your vehicle up and into jump. <laughs> I've never been down this road here. And rotter road. Nice jump. I don't know if we're going to be hit top speed going outside the map boundaries here. And I think that tree or whatever may have screwed the steering alignment. I'm auto steering to the right here. Going 150 right now. 149 in airspeed. Now hitting 150. I'll keep you posted till it's top speed. And I'll drown us in the ocean to my right. Oh, it appears that I'm running out of road. 158 miles an hour. And yep, 158. So technically... We'll call it a pass with the top speed run. It took forever, but it's good enough. So we drowned the vehicle. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought I drowned the engine out. It just stalled in the water. Not only that, we just bend the bed here downward. That's interesting. So now let's switch it up with a time trial with this vehicle. We're going to be going to Jungle Rock Island with the Dirt Stage 1 time trial with this here Ute DT30 wannabe redneck crew cab. So everything is all set up. It's a point-to-point -point race, as you can see here. It says one lap, and you can tell by the map here, the map layout. So right now, bring it to the starting line of this here time trial right now. So here we are at the starting line of this here time trial, and the start line, is it ripped up or something? Hold on. Uh, never mind. It was loading in. <laughs> So it appears once we get going, we immediately make a right turn into this checkpoint to start this course off. So let's get things started here in three, two, one, start. And shut off and restart because it's stalled out. <laughs> Man, this is kind of stupid how the vehicle just does it. Just hold the clutch in for God's sake and... Almost screwed up right there. I should probably do some pull tests or something with this vehicle, especially with this high amount of torque. And endo. Well, Scott, never mind. I thought I was about to say, flip me over. So despite getting significant roof damage, I don't know about the front end or anything, we're still going okay. I mean, that ain't gonna slow me down one bit with severe roof damage. It'll probably uh, be a pain in the ass driving this vehicle with the top of the canopy, the roof of everything, crushing your skull. 
but who cares? As long as they don't screw this up a second time in this time trial and make me restart it. Say these trails are hella narrow for this type of vehicle, or pretty much any type of vehicle, especially on me, I'm treating this like if it's a Group B rally or something, and I'm just taking this way too fast, and now we're widening out a bit. I mean, back there, I was driving in those, um, those trails there, there was like enough for like a whole car could fit through, and I think we're pretty much at the end because it ends at the port section of the map. Which, I think these are probably our last checkpoints. If not, then we'll just keep on going. Let's see. This checkpoint? Mmm, there are another couple more checkpoints, because this is the port spawn area, and yes it is. So we get a total lap time of 2 minutes. That will spend 17 seconds, 206 milliseconds. And I think I might as well just do a pull test or something, like grab a certain vehicle and just off-road with it. Like some sort of trailer, so go to free roam and recover the vehicle and let's just line up a little and grab a tra grab a trailer so don't question what i got here is that i got a car transporter mod set up i had to re-enable the mod and once i re-enable the mod this happens we got no textures whatsoever it's looks pretty stupid and let me see how this works here i got the regular Ute dt30 it's the regular crew cab model not the red Net crew cab model which is this guy right here without the dirt which hopefully you guys are still imagining the dirt from automation so what i'm gonna do here hopefully this does fit is drive this thing up the ramp here as long as i can just maybe just force it in let's see put the parking brake and just force it in there like grab it up and just Line it up, and hopefully this thing can fit inside the truck. And go to... Let's see. Hit O for the... I should have done that first, but... Who cares? Okay, move lifter vertical. The one key. Alright, brings it up. Now hit 2 to do it horizontally. Good. And O to close the door. And now we have loaded up our DT30, the regular model... And spawn up the fifth wheel die, which do I have it or I have to re-enable that one too? Well, I also got to re-enable this, so re-enable and I'll reset the simulation. So I pretty much didn't have to reset the simulation by hitting Control R, so I got the dolly set up, backing it up right now, and I got the tow hitch set up, so stop. And pretty much like last time, do some high fives, everything, till we get some sort of connection, like, come uh, on now. Now we have connection of the fifth wheel dolly to the car transporter trailer to this Red Deck DT30. So are we in control? Yes, we are. So hit the gas now and see what it's like. I think it's impossible because of... <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yep. Oh no, we just put it in low range and... God damn, man. So let's put this in low range and just drive. <laughs> So it is possible with the DT-30 to haul a car transporter. With a DT-30 inside a regular DT-30, not the redneck model. We're kind of swaying over the place, so make this right turn, so we got a big uphill going up here. So wide right, like I do in American Truck Simulator, which I don't know if I should come back to that series. If you guys want me to come back to American Truck Simulator, let me know down below so I can make that happen for you. I haven't really been on that because of a significant, like, drop in viewership. Like, my second video, even though I had a mediocre thumbnail and everything, and just the episode in general, I don't know I should come back to that series, though. Like, if I would, then I would. And second of all, we're just jumping up to second and third gear, struggling to get up this hill. I'll just third gear it all the way. Let the truck do the rest of its work, and maybe go back to second. Let's pretty much end it at this turn here, drop it down the cliff, and then let's just drive this down to, like, car jump arena or something, and... Right turn, right turn. Jackknife! Oh my god, that's a hella bad jackknife. So can I back up, uh, just do that, and then go? Is it still capable, or do I have to... I guess it's capable, so just bring it down this cliff here. Drive down. And here we go, driving down, and... Detach the trailer. And... Hold on. Get get the truck. Get the trailer. It's trailers. Radiator leaking for a trailer? What engine's hydro locking? What? What's hydro locking? This guy? How is the radiator leaking off of a car transporter? That's stupid. Or is it that? So taking a look at the truck here. Good amount of damage in the front left portion of the vehicle, especially this big 
inward dent right here. It's the same thing for the roof and windshield region. The back end, we kind of messed up the back end pretty good. The bad region of the redneck DT30. How about the regular DT30? So regular DT30 is on its side, like always. So despite a leaking radiator, well, we pretty much screwed the front end quite a bit. And the damage is pretty much not as significant, just a good amount of front end damage, which is repairable. Rear end, sides, everything, everything looks clean except for the front end, which is repairable and replaceable if you have insurance on this vehicle. The trailer, on the other hand, looks pretty clean. Some front end damage, but it's pretty clean. Despite all that impacts, it going down the trees, a cliff, and then going into water. So as promised, go to, um... Where is that? Car Jump Arena and see if Cummins will live on going down a ramp. So here we are at Car Jump Arena at the top of the ramp here. We got no lights as of right now. We got one light, two light, three light. Let's wait for all five, four light, five light, and wait for it. Go. Probably a quarter or third of a second start of reaction time and 0 to 60 improved to 5.45 seconds of 205.09 feet. That's pretty great, and top speed wise, we got 161 going down the ramp, and we're gonna pretty much nail it. So, four times regular camera. Pretty much nailed it with a radiator leaking. So, keep on going. Keep on going. Drift into the pool. Oh my god. We pretty much ended like Tony Hawk at the end, grinding inside of the pool wall here. <laughs> With two tires missing because of the impact and the engine is off, so restart. Engine's still fine. <laughs> uh, can we free this with the node grabber? Yes, we can. So take a look at this vehicle. Let's bring it down here. Just slam it down. We shifted the right axle pretty good right here. And the word Ute, the wannabe Ford logo with the wording Ford, is now Icoot. Yeah, Icoot. I C O T. <laughs> That's a... sounds like a business name or something, some fraudulent business name or something. The left side of the vehicle, where the tires are missing, it's obvious that it is missing. And we got smoke coming from the vehicle because of the radiator leaking. The right side, eh, some damage, even though the right axle is moved over, the front axle is pretty much fine, as expected. You know what, what's it like landing this vehicle? 110 and... Nailed it despite some, uh, the license plate just being eradicated. And how about a drift? Flipped it over. Here we go. Broke our tire broken. And barely, almost fully clearing over the pool. And did something fly into the stands or is that me? Engine start of oil. Let's save the engine. Oh, so the thing that flew over was the tire. Wow. So in terms of damage, quite a bit worse than the last time we shifted it upward of the uh, the body of the vehicle, especially the back end. Looks like no signs of any um, like axles shifted over, but we crushed the hell out of it because of the rollover and slamming into this pool wall at the end of the pool and pretty much did this type of damage. So for the last part of the video here, we're going to be driving down this bridge here at a high speed. You get a high speed crash test going by crashing into the last bridge pillar. So let's hit the gas right now and see what it's like crashing at a very high speed. So I swear we got a better 0 to 60 test going. Uh, and yes, we did. 0 to 61 at 6.25 seconds. No, that's pretty similar. Of 282.19 feet. Yeah, it's pretty much similar as you would be going into a straight line. So line ourselves up, drop down the slow mo to an 8 and 16 freeze physics. So 100. It's going to be 155 once we make impact. So high DUI. Get ready for the crash. Uh, bring the FOV back. Good. In three, two, one, go. There's the wow. There's the engine. There's the crash. And we're just gonna stick right there because of that. So looking at this vehicle, oh, I thought we were stuck inside the bridge at first. We reset the FOV. Look at the front end. <laughs> wow. We crushed it up pretty good, and second of all, why is it showing the mouse clicker like I want to click on something? I'm not on anything right now. So, we made this thing into a K-truck. Oh my god, that thing got squished up big time. The freaking cab portion is now into the bed, and the bed is squished upward, and the rear end of the vehicle is pretty much great. 
but we got the drivetrain exposed right here because I saw the engine so we're, yeah that is the engine inside the bed right here because the impact left side is pretty much as expected you got the brake just sitting there just nicely can we move this no we can't because the axle and everything is one piece stuck where right here <laughs> so in overall the driver would have died no matter what so that'll do it with automation and bmg drive with the ute dt30 red deck crew cab well it sucks that there's no dirt whatsoever on this vehicle like you've seen in automation Hope you guys are still imagining, even though I'm at the end of the video. Like, if there would have been dirt on this vehicle, like pre-existing dirt from automation, this would probably look a lot better, and pretty much <laughs> fit the style of this type of vehicle being a southern off-road type of vehicle. What I mean southern is, you know, those people. Well, it pretty much does the job of just driving like a regular truck and hauling a good amount of stuff like the one you've seen at Jungle Rock Island hauling a freaking car transporter. Like, it's a good hauling truck. Accelerates pretty good and everything, but the only downside is it stalls like crazy. I don't know if it's because the gearbox that was set up with the exporting process, the engine or something like that, but that's a big downside. It's a stallaholic truck, as I call it. So this has been Mr. Jack and Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.